Welcome back, SDG Action Zone. I'm so excited to introduce another UN Digest. These are the insider talks from senior representatives from around the UN system, and we're very excited for our next speaker. He is the Assistant Secretary General for the Development Coordination Office of the UN. Please welcome Robert Piper. Thank you. Thank you and good afternoon. A couple of minutes to tell you what I do and uh, why what, what my team is doing is so central to the, the effort around the Sustainable Development Goals. I lead an office called the Development Coordination Office. Uh, it is headquartered in New York, but we manage uh, a network of 131 offices around the world that are serving 165 countries and territories. The face of my office in the field is the resident coordinator of the United Nations. That's the senior most official uh, for development at the country level who reports to the Secretary General and whose job it is to pull together all of the UN's assets to support the government on their development work. We have been under a tremendous transformation. My office is actually only nine months old since the 1st of January. And it's new because the Sustainable Development Goals came along and demanded, demanded that the UN development system transformed itself to keep up with these new expectations. Because the SDGs are not like the MDGs, they're not like anything before. They are ambitious, they are intersectoral, they are qualitative, and the UN system had to keep up with the market. So what have we been transforming in this new office? 1,100 people around the world, in fact, supporting development uh, that is coming together over these last few months. First, the SDGs demand really a whole new leadership model. We need the UN system in the field to be out the front advocating for the qualitative differences between the SDGs and the MDGs, advocating for making sure that no one is left behind, that the data is there, that the evidence is there, that all parts of society are pulled together to make this, uh, to reach 2030. So we have transformed our leadership model for the UN system at the country level. Our resident coordinators, our leaders in the field, are now, since the 1st of January, full-time dedicated to leading the, resident, uh, the, the development coordination function, equipped with a team to help them really make a difference. So a big transformation in our leadership model at the field level. Second, the SDGs demanded a real transformation in a in the way we approach development from a much more sectoral basis to a much more multi-sectoral basis. As you know, every SDG is connected with every, one, every other SDG. We can't make progress if, if the whole set do not advance together. Our job at the Development Coordination Office is precisely to make sure that all of the different 40 plus UN agencies that work on development the UNESCO's, the World Health Organization, the UNDP's, bring all of their expertise to bear for the SDGs. And they bring it together in a coherent way because the SDGs demand a coherent response. So a big part of our job is to transform the tools that we use as the UN system at the country level. How we plan together, how we fundraise together, how we report together, how we measure performance, not just individually, but as a, as a collective. Because if we don't operate collectively, we will not support the SDGs, because the SDGs no longer respect our nice and tidy 1950s architecture. It's not enough to sit in your health sector and think you can take care of your job or in your education sector. It's all about working across our mandates to advance the SDGs. So number two, the DCO office is all about enabling that multidisciplinary response. Number three, the SDGs demand a much more ambitious approach to analytics, to understanding the underlying drivers of disadvantage, of vulnerability, of looking ahead and saying, well, that's today's picture, what will tomorrow bring and to what extent might that threaten the gains of yesterday? or potentially the gains of tomorrow that need to be realized to lift people out of poverty or to address inequality or to address the climate. So a third piece of our work is a real transformation in the way the UN development system approaches its analytical 
task. We have a thing called a common country analysis that's done in every country, and it now becomes really the center of the UN development system's efforts in identifying the, the development landscape in the country in which we work. And again, we cover 165 countries and territories, so that's an incredible repository of insight into the quality of development across the planet. Number four, these reforms are all about financing because the Sustainable Development Goals have pulled us out of our comfortable existence, worrying about how to fund our projects, and pulled us into a much, much larger task of making sure that we are part of a much bigger consortium that finances the SDGs, not our projects. And so in this transformation, we have put in every single office around the world, partnerships and finance people, uh, uh, an economist and so forth, whose job it is to support the resident coordinator and our teams of UN agencies at the field level to look much more broadly at the task in front of them. Not so much about financing our projects and much more about how to pull together consortia to support governments and others in achieving the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. The usual suspects, of course, aid donors who are very important, but we need to go, as you know, way beyond the usual suspects and pull in the private sector, pull in markets, and so forth. So fourth key piece of these reforms is to respond to the demands of the SDGs to really uh, uh, find a new financing framework and think of how valuable the UN's convening power is. We're sitting here in the margins of the General Assembly. This is the most important global meeting place on the planet. And that convening power stretches, not just, uh, it's not just in New York, but it stretches all the way to the, those 165 countries and territories, and below to the sub-regions, to the prefectures, to the municipalities of Mexico, of, of Tanzania, of Thailand. That convening power that we carry to bring people together to achieve the SDGs. And finally, the work of the Development Coordination Office is increasingly about partnership, about enabling our teams on the ground to pull together a diversity of players, so society, government, donors, friends from outside, the private sector, to try and bring together a, a, a major progress on the Sustainable Development Goals. We only have 11 years to go. We know the resources dwarf uh, uh, what are available in our traditional funding sources, but more fundamentally, we know that the ideas that are required, the creativity, the entrepreneurship that will be needed to achieve these Sustainable Development Goals do not live only in the UN system, that's for sure. They don't live only in governments. They really are uh, out there in, with young people, with businesses, uh, with startups, with think tanks, with uh, SDG innovation labs. So finally, fundamentally, these reforms and the work of my team is about making sure that at the country level, our resident coordinators and our wider UN family are reaching out well beyond the usual suspects so that this is truly a team effort. That's what I do. That's the role of the Development Coordination Office. We backstop an incredible network of professionals, 1,100 coordinators led by the UN resident coordinator, the senior most UN official for development at the country level, leading a team uh, of, of UN agencies, most of whom are familiar to you, and whose future depends on us coming together effectively so that we meet the SDG challenge. I hope that was useful. Thank you for your time. Was it useful? <laughs> Huge thank you to ASG Robert Piper once again. And we are so excited about all these UN digests because we don't get to do that all the time, right? We're bringing the world to the UN and the UN to the world. Very good, very good.